it's only appropriate that because we're talking about desserts, that I'm actually eating a dessert while I'm narrating this. And I actually am. I, I have a drumstick, not the meat kind, obviously, but the dessert kind. And this is good because this will get us in the zone for talking about dessert. So maybe you're eating some dessert too. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a peek at this Renaissance painting because that's kind of where it all started, this idea of making food into artwork. And you can tell at this time period, the Renaissance, those artists had a good handle on how to make form look 3D. These objects look real. They're modeled to look like they have mass and volume. So this is going fast forwarded in time to about like the 1960s, 1970s. This is a Wayne Thiebaud painting and he is pretty famous for doing lots of dessert paintings. And they're painted in this heavy kind of thick paint, almost like the paint becomes the frosting in some of these. And you can see he was doing cupcakes there. He's famous for doing lots of pie wedges and cake wedges. Part of the intrigue here is that a piece of pie or cake or dessert isn't going to be around forever. It's going to eventually be used up, consumed, or it's going to be thrown in the trash or recycled in some way. Now these images I'm about to show you, they're all paintings. So even if it looks like a photograph, they're not. They're just hyper real paintings. So sit back, enjoy the show. down to starting your drawing and I would like you to work on blank paper so you could work on drawing paper on this or you could take white printer paper and work on that too either one is fine the only thing is you should have your picture next to you just like you see in the screen and plan on working a little bit larger than we have been so when I say larger I actually measured my drawing at the end and it measures about seven inches by three and a half in height. So somewhere in there, I mean, I'm not gonna go around measuring, but please try and be honest with it. Go a little bit bigger. And again, this is one of the most important things that I can teach you is how to start a drawing. There are really three things you should keep in mind when you're doing an outline. You wanna always start out as light as you can. So go really light. And you don't want to use thick lines, you want to use thin lines. And then 
I would also advise you to use some broken lines. So no need to outline everything as a complete shape. Let some of your lines be open or broken or suggested. You saw from that first earlier clip that I have my picture right near where I'm working and I'm starting off with the crust of this blackberry pie. So I picked a dessert that I like a lot and I also was looking for um, a variety of textures in there too. So there was the blackberries texture, there was kind of the flaky crust texture, there's a scoop of ice cream that's off to one side, and there's some actual blackberries that are uncooked in front and scattered around the pie. I'm going to ignore the plate that the pie is on, and I'm also not going to draw in the fork that happened to be right next to it. So I'm editing out some of those things that were in the original photograph that I was looking at. Sometimes we draw things and I, I tell you, don't worry about it, just keep drawing. It's about practice. That's kind of true here, but this is also a mini project, mini like tiny project. And so because it's a project, that means it's going to be graded a little bit harder than an exercise. So on this, I actually want you to take your time. Try and get it as close and as detailed as you can in the outline stage before you go to shading or hatching and cross hatching. And my plan on this is to, to outline in pencil and then to go over it with pen. So ultimately that's my goal and I'm keeping that in mind. If you have an object that is somewhat geometric, like this is a sort of geometric shape, it's a wedge kind of shape, almost like, well not quite a pyramid, but it definitely has some geometry to it. So I wanna make sure I'm taking into account the perspective on there as well. It has to read visually correct. And that's part of the reason why I'm going to ask you guys to turn in your outline before you do any shading, that you get it to a stage where there's detail and there's you're documenting where things are gonna go and then you turn it in. That way I can give you a little bit of feedback and let you know if anything needs to be adjusted. It is always easier to make adjustments in the first initial stages than it is later on down the road. As you can see, I do want you to submit this into Google Classroom for me to check. It is an assignment and it is worth points. Please insert into a slide. Up until this point, I was using only pencil. Now I'm switching over to pen. And I, I really like pen. I like how dark it can go and I like the look of cross hatching and different shading techniques. So that's what I'm doing here. And I do want you to use cross hatch too. I don't know if you can see this, but on that Blackberry, I'm going to each individual little bump or sphere and I'm trying to give that some curve cross contour lines just like we did to those spheres earlier last week, I guess it was. So I am paying attention to that. I'm using hatching and cross hatching. I'm not just like shading in without a thought. There's a plan in place to help make that berry look 3D. So here's the cast shadow and I'm actually doing this in real time. So this is not sped up. And I'm thinking about that shadow going away from the object so it's kind of stretched out that's why I'm using that those kind of longer strokes and they're all horizontal. I also want to consider that the cast shadow is always going to be darkest right by the object and then the farther it goes away from the object the lighter it's going to get. You will see me cross hatch here in more than two directions at times so that's a vertical kind of stroke and a horizontal stroke, but you can also cross hatch a different way too. You can angle as well. So that's what I'm considering right there is to go darker right where, right underneath that blackberry and then to kind of transition it. And at this stage, nothing's set in stone. So if I need to adjust that blackberry, if I need to get it to go darker, I can, but I like the idea of the blackberries being kind of dark and shiny like that. 
So I'm looking for areas of shadow in there. And I'm going to parts that are in the pie. So I kind of squint my eyes when I'm looking for shadow shapes. And I see them as shapes. You just don't want to outline them. You could with pencil and then just make sure you remember like, oh yeah, don't, don't outline that with pen. So on this pie, if you look at the filling, there were areas where the filling was more in shadow and areas where it was more like a mid-tone and also some glossy highlights because that, that filling is kind of shiny and smooth. So I really like the look of Crosshatch. It reminds me a lot of old engravings. So it has that kind of like historical effect that's interesting. And I'm kind of just, it looks like I'm starting at random places, but I'm actually just trying to figure out where are these darker spots and I'm trying to hit those darker spots up first. So I do have a plan. Now you don't necessarily have to work from dark to light like I'm doing. I'm just showing you my method. I mean, you could start off at one berry and work your way through all the berries. I sometimes get distracted by things within the drawing. This is becoming more of a technical drawing. So that's why I want to give you some time to do it. And you do not have to get all this done in one go. What I would like is for all of you to get just the outline at least done. Once your outline is turned in, make sure you await for feedback. You can always let me know that you're waiting on my response and I'll try and hurry it on up and that way you can start getting into some of the cross hatching. So technically you can do this assignment in pencil because um, you can cross hatch with pencil too just like you were learning about the other day. I'm just having fun with the ink and I like that. And we're in October so what a perfect time to kind of practice our inking skills since it is Inktober. If you don't know what that is, I can put, um, I'll give you a little bit more information on that, but it's a pretty fun thing. It's a good challenge. So I'm going to have to be really careful going on to that crust area because it's much lighter in value than the filling. So I'll have to be minimal with my stroke but still want to indicate the texture. There's all these interesting folds because it's a lattice top. So lattice is a type of pie crust and I'm trying to show how that kind of ribbon looking lattice stuff uh, crust overlaps. And you can use a combination of hatching, cross hatching. I was using some scribble even on the um, Blackberry. Just don't fill in solid where there's no hatching or mark making. And this is only the first stage. I'd say this needs another hour or two in, into it to make it actually happen. What um, you do with one cast shadow, it's important that you do it to all of them. So if you have one cast shadow that's leaning to the right, they all have to have their cast shadows on the right. So I'm going to stop the drawing here. If everyone could get to at least this stage in your drawing by the end of the day on Monday. So this is actually extending into your Monday assignment to get about this far, which is probably, I don't know, a third of the way in.